everybody. Hello, everybody. Guess what? Guess what today is? Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> I got it right, finally. Woo-woo. You're not the only one. At, at work, I had some people think it was Thursday. So. <laughs> well, that's funny. I have to break that news. Maybe it was because it was leap year. We missed a day. It must have. <laughs> Let me tag everybody. We're a little bit early today, so I hope you guys in, maybe can even in, in, uh, join us live. That'd be pretty kind cool. cool. Yeah. yeah. Today's brought to you by raw and filtered honey. Huh. Mmm. Okay. Isn't all honey raw? I don't even know. You know? I wonder. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe this sounds better like that. Maybe. I want the raw honey, not the whatever the other one is. Cooked? Yeah. Mm. A beast bit. <laughs> well, anyways, happy Wednesday, you guys. Hope you guys had a good day. And hope that you guys all got to watch, I mean, read Philemon. 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 Because it's only one chapter. Woo-woo. 25 verses. Yes. That's it. Well, I have some notes. You have some notes. You want to go first? No, you go ahead. Okay. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I like doing the um, intros. <clears throat> Hi, Mom. Thanks for joining us. I like the intros. Yes. So, the church. Okay, this is neat. <clears throat> so, I thought this was an interesting fact. That um, church buildings were unknown until the third century. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, like true. when people say, like, you, how do you put the post of that picture on there? This is the church. This is not the church. Or where the people are the church. Mm -hmm. The church isn't a building. Um, it is really, truly really the people. Mm -hmm. Because churches weren't even around until the third century. So, mm -hmm. that's pretty wild. Mm -hmm. And um, But so what they used to do, Christians would meet in people's houses. And that's where Paul met Philemon. And so, Philemon was a wealthy member of the Colossian church, um, which, you know, he met in his house. And they met in his house. <laughs> um, but that's where they met him, in Colossians. And so Paul met Philemon in Colossians, and um, they, he used his, let him then use his house to, make, to start church or whatever. And so this letter, something else that's neat, this letter is one of only three that Paul wrote to a direct person. Oh, wow. So I thought that was kind of neat. That's he wrote cool. it to Philemon. Timothy and Titus. So those are the only letters that are written to a direct person instead of like the city. Oh, that's pretty cool. I thought that was neat. And so I, these guys must have been like pastory kind of people or maybe le leaders. Leaders, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. And then I thought this was really weird. I had to even go like research it a couple times and have Rick look at it because I thought I was reading it wrong. But Paul was about 60 years old when he wrote this letter from prison. So I was like, how can he be 60? Because this letter was written around 57 to 60 A.D., and so um, that means that Paul was like not born when Jesus was alive. And I thought that was impossible. But then I was researching it and then Rick um, was talking to Rick. And that's true because Paul wasn't really with Jesus. So that made sense then. And he started his, um, you know, growing up. He grew up in, um, I don't remember the name of the place now. Actually, he, he was, uh, grew up in Tar Tarsus. He, yeah. Yeah. Paul in a Roman was, city. Yeah. But <laughs> he was a... a in the Jewish community there, and um, he taught, he learned under good teachers and everything. Yeah, so I mean, smart. he knew the Jewish law, and then he's also remember the one who would crucify Christians. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it was really interesting though, because I kind of assumed that all that happened while Jesus in Jesus's time, mm -hmm. but it was actually after, which is interesting. So when Paul's talking in here, he's ta even mentioning that he's an old man, and um, so he really was because he was sixty, and um, which sixty isn't an old man, but. Compared to what he went through all his life, because like once he became a Christian, he was beaten and cru not crucified, but he was beaten and like just beaten a lot, um, persecuted is what I was trying to say. Um, so and then in prison forever. So mm -hmm. he was an old man based on how he was treated. So I thought that was very interesting. And basically, this whole letter is um, a letter to write um, to see if Philemon will forgive and um, release the debt of Onesimus. Because Onesimus is a slave of Philemon. And Onesimus, before he became a Christian, had stole some money from um, Philemon and ran off. And so through the years and stuff like that, Onesimus ends up in, to, he meets Paul in prison. And so they become really close and Paul converts him. And so he's a converted Christian. And I think that's really cool. So he helps him to convert to Christianity. And so Paul's writing this letter on behalf of him mm. to Philemon. Asking for Philemon to Philemon to release his debt and um, embrace him now as a brother in Christ. Oh, that's pretty so cool. So I think that's really cool. It is really cool. And so this letter is to forgive him. And um, I thought it was neat that Paul even says to um, take his own. Oh, so in the letter, though, Paul even says, um, you know, 
um, I'll pay whatever debt it is he owes you too. Um, unlike you can't pay me back for what um, your debt is because I saved your life. And so I thought that was kind of funny too. Yeah. But I do have this note that Paul even takes his own advice though because um, he mends his relationship between him and John Mark. Because remember, oh, yes, because him, good. John Mark, um, they had, remember they split and went their own ways because they yeah. were mad at each other. Yeah, they, got, they, out. they did yeah. when they were doing their um, missionaries. Mm -hmm. And so they split and were doing their own ways. And so while he's in prison, he actually remends that relationship. And so he's not asking Philemon to do anything that he wasn't willing to do himself. That's pretty cool. I thought that was a really yeah, huge thing. It is. And then I have one last thing, you guys. And so I thought this was really neat. I found this picture. So this is an actual fragment of the epistle to Philemon. It's verses 13 through 15 on pap papyrus. I guess that's what they used mm -hmm. to write it on. And um, I thought it was really neat. It's from uh, uh, 250 A.D., so it's two, from 250 years after Jesus died. But it's the earliest known fragment of the epistle to Philemon. And maybe I can even post it so you can see it better. But isn't that cool? That's pretty cool. And that's the actual paper it was written on and the actual writing. Mm -hmm. And then there's the word so you know I didn't... Whoops. There's the word so you know I didn't make it up. It might be backwards. I don't know. It is. But no. it's okay. But I'll post it on the Facebook page so you guys can see. Because, again, I just love all this kind of stuff. Because it shows how true the Bible is. Because mm -hmm. people always, at least I've always heard people say, it's not real, it's fiction, it's stuff like that. But it's it's real. They have documented papers from it. So I'm like, mm -hmm. that's so cool. Yeah. So anyways, yeah. thanks for listening to my mm -hmm. intro. Have, I just thought that was fun. Actually, on the Bible, we have the most collection of old pieces of fragments of, of any other historic book. Mm -hmm. Even more than all the... Um, philosophers and as big as they are yeah um, and all that stuff we That's have cool. more collections of uh, pieces and parts and enough to go ahead and build your whole bible off of those letters that's really cool and so even in these um last century or so they've actually had schools now that are able to put that together our our bibles today are closer in, in interpretation to the original than mm. they've ever had been that's neat So because they got all the evidence now that's really cool it's neat it's a it's a it's, it's, it's really wild. And if you are somebody who may be on the fence of Christianity, when you see that all this stuff is real, that they actually have proof of all this stuff, mm -hmm. it's pretty amazing. Yeah. And um, it's just really cool. It is. Jesus is real. Yeah. <laughs> God is real. Yeah. And, well, I guess tomorrow <laughs> we start the book of Luke, by the way. Luke! And it's going to be a long one. I am uh, your father. But... I love the Gospel of Luke. It's just an amazing book, and we'll enjoy it as well. And he's a medical doctor, right? He's a doctor. A physician, I should say. Yeah. yeah. And he traveled with Paul. I'm sure he was patching him up a lot. Yeah. So. But it's neat, because then you're going to get that perspective of him. So I think that's mm -hmm. neat. Yeah. And uh, uh, where, where Matthew was part of the... He was he had the real Jewish flavor mm -hmm. out of it. You have more of a Greeker flavor out That'll of it. That'll be fun. Luke. So it's kind of fun. That's You'll fun. enjoy it. Well, um, stay tuned for um, daily... Uh, um, Bible studies. Yep. We'd love to hear your input. Let us know you're still watching because that way we know this is worthwhile. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Otherwise, we're just looking at ourselves. So <laughs> yeah, we, we can do that here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyways, um, we love you guys and hope you have a good evening and we'll see you tomorrow and hope you um, think about that with Philemon. It's really cool stuff. Um, very neat. Yep. Love cool. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.